her family survived Chile's major earthquake this spring, only to be hit with disaster twice in the same year. Her son moved north to work as an engineer in the mine. He started three months ago. I won't be happy until he's right here in front of me and I can hug him, she says. Elisa Segovia Rojo is staying here until her brother is rescued. We are asking everyone to pray, she says, because now the long wait begins. This Bible, a testament that faith in God is everywhere at Camp Hope. Everyone says they believe in miracles now, after the miners sent up a message Sunday to say they were alive and well against all the odds. Rosa Ibanez says faith can move mountains. And that's exactly what people here will have to do to get their loved ones back. Connie Watson, CBC News at the San Jose Mine, Copiapó, Chile. After surviving for two weeks on a spoonful of canned tuna and a few sips of milk every two days, the miners now had access to all the food and water they needed. But experts worried about their psychological state. How would they survive being trapped for months in such close quarters? The CBC's Kim Brunhuber looked into that question. Even after seeing the video, it's hard for many of us to picture 33 people living in about 500 square feet. Imagine spending months in a space not much bigger than this. Now add 32 other people. Those who work in mines say nothing can prepare you for living underground for months. We always talk underground like uh, be your brother's keeper or your sister's keeper, right? So uh, hopefully the, the bond between the men, uh, the brotherhood that's there, uh, they'll stick together. If you're the type of person that enjoys camping, you'll love it here. Uh, Living in a confined space is something Bob Thirsk knows all about. The Canadian spent six months at the space station living with other astronauts. Aboard the space station, uh, our favorite number one activity was uh, looking out the window at, at Earth. The miners don't have that, that luxury, so it's important for them to come up with something else. I would recommend music. Right now, NASA psychologists are on their way to Chile to help the miners deal with being trapped, like how to avoid conflicts in cramped quarters and what to do if someone cracks. We do uh, discuss uh, something like that, and if that happens, then of course, some of the members of the team need to redirect their energies to supporting that uh, person that's, uh, that's in distress. Peter Sudfeld studies isolation and overcrowding. He says their conditions often lead to anxiety, hostility and depression, but most people can eventually adapt. Sudfeld believes the miners may even emerge from underground as better people thanks to what he calls post-traumatic growth. They could become more devoted to their families and more spiritually aware. If these guys come through this experience uh, reasonably well, which my expectation is they will, uh, their self-confidence should be greatly uh, enhanced. The miners had been told it might take until Christmas to rescue them, but in early October, one of three drills broke through the roof of the chamber where the men were trapped. A special capsule was lowered down the narrow shaft, and the amazing rescue began. The CBC's Sasha Petrasik was there. Things moved so quickly, the capsule made its trip so efficiently today, at times it almost seemed as routine as getting onto an elevator, except it really wasn't. Way down, each miner was squeezed into a narrow tunnel for a bumpy journey in an area known for sudden rock slides, more than 200 stories up and all in the dark. No wonder each arrival today was greeted with cheers and applause. Even a hug from Chile's president. Immediately followed by a medical exam. Most miners came up smiling. Well, a couple seemed weak from their ordeal. We are actually surprised at the good shape they're in, said the country's health minister. The drama of Los Mineros and their time trapped has captivated Chileans. The miners themselves have become well-known personalities as their stories and reputations spread. Take Johnny Barrios, called the philanderer. 
When he emerged as the 20th miner rescued, Chileans already knew that he had both a wife and a mistress pining for him. And the country watched in fascination today to see which one would show up. It was his mistress. Carlos Mamani, the only foreigner and number four up, is known as the Bolivian. He came to find work in Chile and only started at this mine five days before the accident. He's so well known in his home country that it wasn't just his wife and daughter to greet him. Bolivian President Evo Morales came to visit in hospital as well today. We are here for you, he told Mamani. You should recover and we'll be waiting for you in Bolivia when you're ready. Morales has already promised the miner a job and a house back home. Perhaps the most gripping personal story was that of Ariel Ticona, called the proud father. Trapped in the mine, he was so upset that he'd missed the birth of his daughter, officials set up a video line so that he could watch. All of Chile watched along with him. Ticona was the second last to be rescued from the mine, number 32. Diana, it's just been absolutely incredible here, the, uh, the rescue itself and everything else. Uh, these miners will now go into hospital for the next two days. They will be examined and uh, they've been flying out of here by helicopter all the time. This entire place here will disappear within the next day, I would imagine, because uh, some of these people have left jobs, they've left their lives, they're going back to those. The media, of course, will disappear as well as the world's focus moves on. Well, the world's focus did move on, but the media did not disappear, especially in Chile. And it was soon obvious that life for the miners would never be the same. Here again is the CBC's Sasha Petrasek. The miners may have escaped from the depths of the earth, but it's clear now they won't be able to escape from the cameras or their fame. As each man has left hospital, he's been chased down the street, into his neighborhood, right to his crowded front door. Like Edison Pena, most took it with good nature. I thought I would never return, he told the crowd. That's why I'm crazy about this reception. Thank you for believing we were alive. Bolivian Carlos Mamani also had kind words for his new country, thanking the Chilean people for a perfect rescue. Long live Chile, long live Bolivia. But it's not just the media that's obsessed with the miners, so are ordinary Chileans. Nurse Gabriela Del Pino snuck her video camera into work on the night they arrived at her hospital. Oh, totally. They totally celebrated. Imagine all the hospital was like, stop their working and go see them. I'm asking him. She even interviewed them about their rescue and the helicopter ride. Everything, everything's fine. Everybody's okay. So okay, they were joking around and sweet talking the nurses as soon as they arrived, says the wife of one miner, Mario Gomez. <laughs> well, they're men, she says. What do you expect? After being treated in hospital and released, some of the miners returned to the mine site. They wanted to see where their families had waited for them and never lost hope. Here again is the CBC's Connie Watson. Thirteen miners and their families returned to the mouth of the San Jose gold mine today to thank God for their survival and to see Camp Hope for themselves. I'm very happy to come back and see the camp our family set up, says Jimmy Sanchez. No one let me see anything while I was underground. Sanchez, who's 19, was working his first job for only a few months when he was trapped. He says thoughts of his baby daughter kept him alive. 56-year-old Omar Regatis came back to Camp Hope to see where his son kept vigil. It's so exciting to see this, he says. I've always said the families who stayed here and kept faith are the true heroes. Regatta says being trapped for 69 days brought him closer to God and to the brink of despair because he thought he'd never see his family again. The 33 miners have become superstars since they emerged, bombarded by requests to tell their stories, offered trips and VIP treatment. 
The diary kept by this miner, Victor Segovia, is one of the most sought after souvenirs. It's reportedly been taped shut and hidden away to protect its secrets until the men are ready to tell all. Word is the miners made a pact that they would set up a foundation, charge for their interviews, write a book based on that diary, and split the profits. We are a group of 33, says Juan Illanes. We have very serious intentions to officially consolidate our group, to set up an institution or a commercial operation. That business plan may be their best bet, because the mine, which still officially employs the men, may soon be out of business. Some of the 300 workers who haven't been paid since the men were trapped held a demonstration today to demand the company pay up. Connie Watson, CBC News, Santiago. And one final note. In November, the New York City Marathon was held and one special runner took part. Edison Pena, one of the miners, joined the pack of 45,000 runners. And although a knee injury forced him to walk at times, he completed the course in just under six hours. A fitting tribute to the strength and courage that enabled him and his fellow miners to endure such a long ordeal and earn them the admiration of the world. And that is News in Review. Now don't forget to check out our website at newsinreview.cbclearning.ca. I'm Michael Serapio. Thanks for watching.